Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm here with another book review video. As always, these opinions are my own, they're not affected by authors, publishers or my fans. And so let's get straight into it. So the book I'm actually doing a review on today is Three Dark Crowns by Kendra Blake. Kendra Blake also wrote the Anti-Goddess series and the Anna and the Dressed in Blood duology. And don't be fooled, those books are completely different to this. And if you had to ask me for my dead honest opinion, I would say that this was the worst Kendra Blake book I have read so far. I should probably mention to you guys that if you guys did enjoy this book, you might not want to watch this video because I rated this book one star on Goodreads. I did not enjoy it and I have very many reasons for that so I shall get into that now. The first half of this video will be spoiler free and the second half shall contain spoilers because I would like to justify the reasons why I did not like this book in more detail without actually giving away for those of you who are looking for reviews on whether or not to pick up this book. I feel like somewhere during the publication of this book somebody did a mistake. I'm trying not to pick on anybody or offend anybody, but in my own opinion, I think that this book has been marketed the wrong way. They have marketed this book for an audience for a story that a lot of people would pick up to enjoy and I myself picked it up because I thought this was going to be a really heavy, gruesome, battle, fighting to the death book. And the reason why I thought that was because at the very top here, with just a single line, it made me think that it was going to be a lot more fast paced and dangerous than it actually was. So it says three sisters, one throne and a fight to the death. So that alone kind of gave me pretty high hopes and I know Kendra Blake from her Anna Dress and Blood series and her anti Goddess series, she does not shy away from gore and violence and blood and everything like that. And so I was so excited because I thought that was going to be like what this book contained, but instead I found that the first three quarters of this book was so painfully slow with characters that I could not really relate to and so many of them being introduced to you so quickly it was really hard to kind of absorb myself into the story. I can see how people would like it, the writing style is good, um, but I myself just did not enjoy it. So that sentence still told you guys a lot about this book, but if not, uh, you basically have three sisters, all of them have different kinds of elemental magic. So you have Mirabella, who she can pretty much control fire and earth and wind and everything like that. Catherine, who is a poisoner, she is resistant to all poisons. And lastly, you have Arisno, or Arisno, I can't pronounce that one, but she is a naturalist, so she like can do natural things. Good explanation. Every so often triplets are born, they are all fighting to the death to be queens. It has happened from time before forehands and shall happen from times again and these three it happens that the story hands revolve around. It's all different perspective, it is not just from the three young queens, it also has one of the queen's best friends, it also has like other people that I can't even think of what they are right now because my mind hates me. But it just jumped around so much in these perspectives that by the time I did start to like a certain character we didn't hear from them for quite a while and then when I did hear about them I kind of forgot who it was. I must admit I did skim and read about half this book. I am someone who does not do not finish books. I'm someone who skims to the end because I have the need to know what actually happens and I unfortunately predicted what would happen within the first three chapters and I'm not sure if it was just because I can see plot twists coming from a mile away or whether there was more people out there who have seen it but yes I saw it so I was an actually very amazed by the ending of this book like so many people are. I can honestly say though that this book was a setup for the next book. It is trying to introduce you into this world and these characters and what exactly is happening so I don't know if I'm going to read the next book yet. I think it's going to highly depend on the reviews that I hear from it before I decide on it but yet yeah, it's slow, but if you guys like this kind of plot line, then maybe read it and just hang out for the second book. With the characters, I haven't really talked much about them, but like I said, I didn't connect to any of them. I, like, honestly don't really care about any of them. I just... I don't know, like... <laughs> I guess I like Arisno because I like animals and I kind of thought that she would, you know, you know, I don't... <laughs> this is a terrible book review video. I can't even form words and when I do it's just stuttering mess because I don't know how to nicely say the way that I dislike this book. So yes, I gave it 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and I highly recommend that you guys look around at different reviews before you decide on buying this book because I can imagine that there would be varying opinions. Now for part 2 of this review, the spoiler side of it all, so welcome to the spoiler section. If you guys don't want to know spoilers, I guess it's pretty obvious that you should leave now. Okay, so for those of you who have read it, thank you for watching, thank you for being here. I don't know if you guys enjoyed this book, but if you did, I would still definitely recommend that you leave because I hated this. 
I knew within the first three chapters that Catherine and Arisne were in different positions because immediately my mind predicted that for the two queens that didn't actually have their powers yet that they most likely were in the wrong space. From the moment that Catherine couldn't actually survive the poison, I knew something was up because I don't know, it was obvious to me, I don't know if it was to you, I don't know what my exact train of thoughts were during this part, but as soon as I read, like, Aris knows, like, point of view, or her best friend's point of view, it just clicked and I was like, there you go, they're not getting their fucking powers because they can't. Then everything was so boring, and, um, I pretty much skipped through towards the end. And then I read what happened, and I was so confused. And, like, granted, it is my fault that I'm confused because I skipped so much of it. But, like, when the hell did Joseph just jump on Mirabella? Like, I turned to a page, and they're talking about how apparently they just randomly got it on at one point, and she almost killed him. Like, is that correct? Or, like, did I just completely take that out of context? Because I have no clue what even happened. And I don't really have any need to feel like I need to go back and read it. Because I was literally sitting in bed, and my cousin walked past, and I had a facial expression like... Just envision that scene of Bradley Cooper throwing that book out of the window. That's me. That was me. That ending plot twist, like, could Catherine have possibly died? I kind of hoped that she did in a way, because, like, at least one of the queens fought to the death, like the book suggested at the beginning. Wasn't really a fight, but, you know, at least she was dead. And it's so annoying because I have a feeling that none of these queens are gonna die. Like, maybe one of them will die, but either way, they're gonna break society. When did I become such a terrible person that I actually want a terrible storyline like that to not resolve in a happy way? Why wouldn't I want the three queens to survive? Why do I only want one of them to win this fight to the death? What is wrong with me? I guess I've turned this book review production into a witch hunt. Um, I fear that you guys are probably going to burn me at a stake because I'm a terrible person. I can definitely see the potential in Three Dark Crowns, and I have seen a few reviews that share my opinion, but none that are quite as savage or as low rating as what I had. So hopefully, like, Ken Z. Blake will read these reviews and just improve the book as a whole. It just needed that little bit more oomph for it to be great, like a bit more about the characters, a bit more about the world, a bit more about the plot, and it would have been good. It would have been like at least a three star rating for me, but unfortunately it just was not on par with the other books that I have read, so that is why I rated it so low. Anyway, thank you guys for watching my book review video and sorry if I have offended anybody with my opinions on this book and the way that I have delivered them because I did just throw a book and that actually kind of hurt my heart a little bit. I shall be back again soon and until then have a lovely bookish day and hopefully great things happen to you. On the fourth day of Christmas my true love sent to me.